Hello, my friends. It's Ranger Russ from the Megs Point Nature Center. I'm uh, going to be bringing a different type of program today, so we'll see how this works out. But first of all, I want to let everyone know we had a fantastic program on Saturday. I haven't got to watch the entire thing yet, um, but about deer and ticks in Connecticut. That was this past Saturday at 10 o'clock. You can watch that video on our website at megspointnaturecenter.org if you visit the Virtual Learning Center. You'll also be able to see it on YouTube as soon as it gets up on our YouTube channel. Uh, but right now you can go on and see it on our Facebook feed. So Megs Point Nature Center on Facebook, uh, which is where you're watching this one. Um, and there will be many more of these programs coming up on Saturdays throughout. Uh, so I think we're through March now. We're getting ready to work on April and May. Every Saturday at 10 o'clock, just look for those programs. These are all going to be guest speakers. I'm not going to be uh, presenting these programs, although I, I will be asking questions along the way. Uh, I, I, I like asking questions because I like learning new things. And I think that's the reason most of you are tuning in is because you want to hear something new and different each day. So we will continue these programs Tuesday through Friday at 11 o'clock. So you can look for them. I'm also going to remind everyone, uh, today's not the best day to walk on the, the trails here at Hammonasset, but some people are out there. But if it is a nice day and you want to walk the trails, the trails are not cleared by any means. Uh, we don't even attempt to clear them, but you can walk on them whenever you like. But we still ask you to please wear your masks, maintain your social distance. It's really important even though we're getting you know, more testing, more vaccines out there, we still need to be completely cautious. Um, I'm going to tell you right up front, a mask is not 100% effective. Keeping six feet is not 100% effective. But if we do both of those substantially, it's going to reduce not only your chance of getting the virus, but the severity of the virus that you're getting. And I did talk about that in another program. I'm not going to get too much into that this morning, um, but a mask can reduce your viral load, which decreases your symptomology. So I really suggest that you continue to wear a mask, continue to keep social distance, even if you have the vaccine. Um, still a good idea. There's no proof, I don't think, uh, I haven't heard anyway, that just because you're vaccinated doesn't mean you can't uh, be a carrier. So we still need to learn more about this. So let's just keep cautious, keep distance, keep your masks on. I would appreciate it. And so would most of the people hiking on our trails. All right. So today's program is going to be a little different. I want to make this more of an interactive program. So I have a question for you. And we're going to make it sort of specific, but we can talk broadly if you want. And the specific question would be, should you feed birds on backyard bird feeders? Okay. We'll talk in general, should you feed wildlife in general? Uh, but specifically, should you feed birds on wildlife bird feeders? So first of all, I want to hear what you think about this. Because I've done some research and there is not a lot of scientific data behind whether or not you should feed birds or not. So let's hear what you guys have to say. I appreciate everybody putting up where you're messaging from. I see Chicopee and Uncasville and Plainville. Uh, also, if you would like to give your weather report for today, today here at Hammonasset, it is in the low 30s with a slight breeze and no snow at all. There was a little bit of a flurry when I got into work today, but no snow for the past couple of hours. So it's really... Um, it's a pretty nice day out there right now. So I see already do in the winter, but not in the summer. Somebody says I do. I am curious, but enjoy feeding the birds. All right. So we've already got one of the controversial things about feeding birds. And that is, do you feed them only in the winter? Or can you feed them in the winter or the summer? So the idea behind that is that birds will become dependent on feeders for food if you feed them year round. 
Now, looking it up again, there's no scientific paper that I could find. That's not to say it's not out there, but I couldn't find a scientific paper that said whether you should or not. Okay, so it's snowing in Plainville and uh, most birds for most of the year. So, what else? Oh, three or four inches on the ground in southern Michigan. It will not even hit 20 degrees. I think we have here at Hammond Acid about 10 inches of snow because our last snow didn't leave before this snow. And I guess we're getting another snowstorm on Thursday. So we're going to end up with a lot of snow. All right. We used to have... Oh, these are going by really fast now. Um, let me scroll back. And let's read your comments here. We used to have bird feeders until two hawks started perching. Good, good point to bring up above the feeders. Uh, it was a double layer of bird feeder. Unfair for the songbirds. Okay, feeding birds in winter. Keep our feeder clean. There's another good one right there. We'll talk about that. Um, the right kind of seed. Carol has done some research. Love to watch the birds at the feeder. Uh, planting plants that provide seeds. Very good. Hummingbirds, May to September. Yeah, you're not going to be feeding hummingbirds in the winter. They don't stick around. They are pretty smart. Uh, they f survived without uh, us before we came along but it's fun to feed them. I've been feeding since I was a child. All right, so we've got some great comments up there, a lot of things to get this conversation started. Uh, Tina says she's been trying to plant plants, uh, native plants, to attract birds and monarchs. And love when the hummingbirds visit. So I will say, I was not thinking we would be talking about planting and feeding the birds that way. That is absolutely a fantastic thing to do. That's the best way to do it. I would suggest everyone, if possible, if you're putting plants around your home, you use select native species. That's going to provide food for native species. And we like that. Now, somebody mentioned choosing the right seed. That is very, very important. So you can buy a seed that's uh, like a all bird seed. All birds will eat it. That is not a very effective way. It's it's a it's cheaper bird seed, but you end up going through a lot more because they put a lot of filler in there. There's a lot of seed in there that birds do not eat at all. That the birds just flick through. You've ever seen the birds flicking? and the seeds flying everywhere and they're like, what, what are they doing? They're throwing all their seed on the ground. You do not want that. First of all, that's going to attract rodents, particularly rats, to your feeder. And nobody wants to have rats around this. The Norway rat is not a native species um, and they will be attracted. That's actually currently why we're not feeding here at the Nature Center. When we built the new Nature Center, we believe we dug up a rat's nest disturbed that nest and the rats moved to the old building and uh, they were feeding underneath the feeders. Now they were probably feeding under the feeders all along, but they weren't in the building the way they were once we started construction. So that's something to keep in mind that seed on the ground is just going to attract animals that you may not want. Now it's going to attract squirrels and other native things too. You know, I've had uh, possums underneath the bird feeder um, you might get a skunk later on in, in, when it gets into spring, and raccoons will also visit under the bird feeders. But selecting the right food, that's really what you want to do. Now, certain birds eat certain seed, so you're going to want to do some research and find what birds you want to attract. But if you want different kinds of birds, you need to put up different kinds of feeders. First of all, different birds feed on different feeders. For example, the cardinal is a platform feeder. It will eat on a flat level platform, not always going to perch on a feeder and pick seed out of it. Um, in the summertime, 
I like to feed thistle to the finches in the summer. You can do it in the winter too, but that's one of the ones that uh, I suggest people doing all year. They, they will pick the thistle out of basically it's just a thistle sock. So a very different style of feeding uh, than most of the other feeders. But the point is you want to select seed that is going to attract the bird that you want to attract and buy that specific seed. Don't buy a general seed because you're going to get a lot of stuff ending up on the ground. Uh, and some of it, not even the squirrels are going to eat. So you don't really want that because that just leaves it for the rats or the mice. Um, so let's go on. Let's take a look, see if we have any other comments on the bird. Uh, someone says it's steady snow in Stafford Springs. Yeah, I think this is going to be a, a definitely a more northern storm so there's another attracting uh, bears bird feeders definitely attract bears now the bear is the largest predator that we have here in connecticut at least by weight um, but it's it's a really unique animal because it doesn't eat big things typically they eat grubs out of the ground they'll eat berries and they eat a lot of seeds now Bears this time of year should be in the in their dens, not going anywhere, uh, settled down, and that's going to be that. So you're not going to worry about attracting them this time of year. But in the spring and the fall, or if we get a really warm day in the winter, bears are not true hibernators. If it gets really warm, they're going to come out and look for food. Um, then you're going to attract bears, and you may or may not want bears in your yard. I kind of I think it would be cool to see a bear in my yard, uh, but I wouldn't want to see a bear destroy my bird feeder, which also could happen. And Judith says, what about suet feeders? Um, ooh, and she has five inches of snow. So suet feeders, that's a great thing to feed, and it's very spe species specific. Uh, typically, you're going to get blue jays and woodpeckers on the suet. Other birds will go there. Um, it's a high fat content, so it's good. And luckily for us, birds know what type of food they need. So if it's really cold and they need a, a higher fat content, they are going to go for the suet. If it is not so cold, uh, then they're going to go and eat the seeds. So suet is a very good one. It is species specific. Um, Let's talk a minute, too, about the feeders, because you can select a feeder that's going to be selective to the type of birds. So there are smaller perching bird feeders that are going to discourage larger birds like grackles and blue jays, which can come in. It's a bigger bird, and they can clean out your feeder very quickly. Also, somebody mentioned hawks earlier. That is a really good point. What are we going to do about hawks? And I actually got to see... A Cooper's Hawk this morning, right after I parked my car, it flew. I saw it in the tree when I drove by. I parked, and it flew right past my car. I thought it was going to crash into the front of my car. It was so close, and it was a foot off the ground. So it was definitely targeting something, but I didn't see the little bird it was targeting. It flew by my car. I watched in the rearview mirror. It swooped and grabbed a horned lark right out of the parking lot here at the Nature Center. That's going to happen. That's natural. It's going to happen more often on a bird feeder. Because what happens with a bird feeder is you have more birds gathered together. It's an attraction to predators. Again, some people think, oh, that's a terrible thing. You're, you're increasing predation. Other people think you're not really increasing it. It's a fact of life. It's going to happen anyway. So why not happen in front of me? And, and they enjoy watching Whatever bird is eating at the feeder, if it may happen to get one of your birds, you're going to eat, watch the hawk eat the small bird off of the feeder. Um, I, <laughs> this is a difficult one. So again, I did some research. I wanted to find scientific papers. And all I could find is, yes, it increases predation. Okay. But is that necessarily a bad thing? I don't think that a hawk that eats 
three small birds a day is going to now eat six small birds a day because it's easier to catch them off the feeder. Birds are, wildlife in general is not wasteful. They're not going to take more than they need. They're not going to kill more than they can eat. They're not going to kill more than they need to survive. So I don't think that the predation off of a feeder it should be too much of a discouragement for you unless you don't want to see it. And that is fine. If you have a personal thing that, oh, you don't, you know, it's the facts of life. You know, it's the circle of life. That's the word I was looking for, the phrase. You know, it's the circle of life, but you don't want to be part of it. That's fine. And, and I will respect that. Um, so that is something to consider, though. Let's see. We add mealworms. Good job for the mealworms. Again, species specific. Mealworms are almost exclusively eaten by the bluebirds. Now, blue jays will come in and clear out your mealworms very quickly, so you, you do have to watch out for that one. Uh, hawk flew over trying to snag the squirrel that was eating the bird seed. Got under the white pine branch for cover. That's really cool. That's interesting. Now, I did find online many people, there's a lot of non-scientific information out there, but let's address it anyway. So one of the things was that you get more window strikes when you have a bird feeder. Now, I'm not going to get more window strikes. My bird feed feeders at home are far from my windows. And I have the UV uh, decals on the windows, which means that the window is going to show up as something that the bird does not want to fly into. They're going to, write, they're going to be able to see that because it's UV. So window strikes, that's going to be specific to the type of feeder that you have. You can get window feeders that you put on, but I'm going to suggest that you get a UV sheet or something to cover that window so that you don't get window strikes. So window strikes can happen depending on the feeder more often with a feeder, but it's easily remedied just you know some uv decals on your window and the bird will be able to tell that it's not a clear passage all right let me just check and see if we've got any other comments cooper's hawk red tail hawks so quite a few people with hawks what kind of feeder uh, do you use for mealworms um Typically, I've seen they're just a small platform feeder, um, but you can get a feeder with a little bit of a roof on it, a platform feeder with a roof on it, and you want those because that actually can decrease predation on your feeders. If the bird feeding has cover, it's going to give it a place to duck into if there's a predator around. Um, but typically, the predators are smarter. My camera's not focusing today. Uh, typically, the predators are smarter, and they're going to wait for the bird to be flying away, and then they'll they'll target it then. Um, but all good questions and comments so far. So let's talk about another thing. And somebody mentioned earlier, I don't remember who, um, that keep, keeping the feeders clean. That is very very important. Every few weeks, you should clean your feeders. Uh, they recommend a 10% beet bleach solution to clean and sterilize those feeders because that is one scientific thing that I was able to find. They have done research and they have proven the increase, they call it finch eye, it's sort of an a infection of the eye that typically is in finches that is increased with bird feeding. So what happens at a feeder? First of all, you're attracting birds and you're attracting lots of birds. When you get lots of wild animals together, they can spread the diseases. And because it's um, multiple species, you could get a disease that spreads from species to species, where normally a disease is, you know, that bird is only going to encounter members of its own species, so it's going to stay within species. A feeder enables it to spread to other species. So keeping your feeder clean, that's one thing that you can do to try and reduce that uh, spread of disease. So I would really recommend, you know, sterilize those feeders every 10 days or so is probably good. Um, so 
it, it increases the contact that they have. Another thing that it does is you're increasing interspecies contact altogether, which may or may not be a good thing, um, but it is something to keep in mind. Let's see, black oil sunflower. That is one of the specific ones that there are. Our native birds, I think, black oil sunflower is their favorite, and it resembles or it's found in Connecticut too. Suet cakes. And a few squirrels happy too. All right. So again, well, let's talk about squirrels. Uh, not many diseases will spread from a mammal to a bird or vice versa, from a bird to a mammal. Uh, but it is something that, that you need to be aware of. I mean, it is possible that it happens. Uh, something we haven't talked about too much yet, and it's dependency on a bird feeder. So many people think, oh, we should not feed birds at all because then they will become dependent on us for food. And I think my mom mentioned at the beginning there, they were surviving without us. They can survive with us or without us. Now, birds will change their behavior uh, if there's a feeder out. But they've done some research and they found that birds don't typically just go to one feeder to feed. Typically, if birds are feeding on feeders, they will go to multiple feeders. They're not just going to visit you. They're going to visit you and your neighbor. And what they have found in the research is birds are traveling for miles, miles and miles, to visit multiple feeders and wild seed sources. If you don't put feed out, they're going to move to the next feeder or wild seed. And that's an important thing to keep in mind. Just because you have a feeder out, just because there is a steady source of food, doesn't mean that's their exclusive source of food. They are still feeding on wild seed sources. That's why it's really important to plant wild native plants around your home, because that becomes a wild seed source. And that's what we like to see. Um, I see Carol plants uh, sunflower and leaves the flowers on the stalk uh, for the birds, which is, that is really fun to watch because usually the sunflower gets so heavy it tips and hangs upside down and the birds will land upside down and pick the seeds out. So that's always fun. Um, the other part of that is feeding in the summer. So I do, I'll put out seed occasionally in the summer just if I, I wanna see a little more, more uh, wildlife activity in the yard. Um, but I feed more often in the, in the winter. I'm not a consistent feeder. I'll let it go. When there's a storm coming, I'll put uh, seed out. If it's not, you know, I might skip a day. But generally, there's a little seed in, in one of the feeders or the other because I have, I have multiple feeders out there. Um, so keeping that in mind, you don't have to feed every day. You know, once you're feeding, your bird is not, oh, there's no food there. I'm now going to starve to death. That's not how the wild, uh, the wild world works. Um, they are going to go and find food somewhere else. So that's something to keep in mind. Their instincts are still going to be there. And that's, that's another important thing. With perching birds anyway, they, are, they know what seed is good for them and what seed they don't like or isn't so good for them. And they're going to pick through and take the seed that, that is the seed that they would normally eat. Let's just do one little quick side note. Feeding bread to birds is a terrible thing. It's actually really, really bad. Uh, bread does not have the nutritional value for the volume that birds need. So they will fill their bellies with bread and then not have room for a higher nutrition, denser food source. So you really want to be careful about bread, okay? Um, we have had instances in Waterford, I believe it was, at the library there. Uh, there's a small pond, and they were actually having their duck population was starving to death. They were Ducks were dying of malnutrition, and it was not because they didn't have enough natural food. It was because people were feeding them so much bread 
they were not eating anything uh, with that higher nutritional content that they needed, that higher density of nutrition. So we, you really do need to be careful. I see people out here tossing uh, bread to gulls. You know, you think, oh, I only do it, you know, once a day or once every couple of days, but you're not the only one to do it. So if those birds are eating too much bread, they, they will eventually starve to death. Okay, uh, some other comments. So I just don't like feeding bread at all. And I thought I saw someone mention about bread crumbs. And Judith asks, peanuts or bread crumbs? Peanuts, great. Bread crumbs, not so great. Um, again, bread crumbs, not the nutritional value that the, that the birds need. Although I believe there's more nutrition in a bread crumb. It's, it's denser and, and drier, so it's not that it's this big bulky thing that's going to fill them up too quickly. But peanuts are an excellent thing. Again, the woodpeckers love them. Blue jays love them. There are a few birds that really like the peanuts, and that is a more species-specific one. So that's a good one. Right. Park near me has a machine. Oh, glad you brought that up. That's actually one of the things that they did where, where these ducks were starving to death. Uh, they put up machines with the pellets. The, those are denser nutrition pellet that you can now put a coin in and, and feed the ducks. They put up signs that said, please don't feed bread. And they put up those machines and now I believe the ducks are doing fine over at that pond. Uh, well, let's, let's talk about that for a second. Ducks are a good one to lead into because some species have changed their migratory behavior. And this is scientific. I did find a paper in England. They found, or Spain, sorry. Spain, the white storks of Spain reduced their migration to North Africa, which is where they would have normally wintered in North Africa and gone back to Spain uh, for the summer. They started staying in Spain all year because of landfills. The areas that they naturally inhabited were getting more and more landfills. The birds are able to get food from landfills and they were staying there year round. That's not necessarily a good thing. Here in Connecticut, if you've noticed some Canada geese no longer migrate. When I was a kid, there were no Canada geese here in the winter. You could not find a Canada goose in Connecticut in the winter. Now you can. That is putting a heavier burden on our natural native habitats. Okay, if a, if a Canada goose stays here all year, they're feeding all year, birds that do migrate, that feed on similar things, migrate and come back, the Canada geese have eaten the seed all winter long. There's a lot less seed available when birds are returning. So change of behavior uh, for seed, that is a, a real thing, a real possibility. Now, I haven't seen many perching birds extend their season, and I don't think it would be for feeders. I think it's more due to weather changes. Uh, but that is definitely something to keep in mind. All right, let's see what else we have. I want to take a minute here and uh, take a pause and remind everybody these programs happen Tuesday through Friday at 11 o'clock on Facebook Live, but you can see them on our YouTube channel or at MegsPointNatureCenter.org in the Virtual Learning Center. So please visit those sources. Uh, for. There's also additional content at MegsPointNatureCenter.org. All right. Reassuring news birds find their food. Do not just use your feeders. That is That was interesting to me. I always knew that they would go to natural food sources as well as your feeder or your neighbor's feeders. I didn't realize how many miles it was. For a small bird like a chickadee, it's going to be a mile or so. The larger birds, they say it could be five to six miles. And, and I think a bigger bird like a blue jay is probably even more than that. So that is a good thing to keep in mind when you're, when you're putting your feed out. Susan has noticed the Canada geese in Michigan all year. 
And that also does have to do with, with climate, without snow cover. So if there was snow cover regularly throughout Connecticut, the geese would have to migrate because they wouldn't be able to get down to the ground. They don't do a lot of digging through snow for food. But we've had some pretty mild winters with the snow melts away completely and, and re-exposes the food. So it definitely changes um, how the birds behave. All right, so let's talk one of the reasons why I feel people should feed birds. Um, Audubon has been doing research and it's really sad. 167 million birds. That's the estimate for decline since 1970. 167 million birds have died off. So that means populations have reduced. That, that comes out to about one in four bird reduction in 50 years. And that's becoming exponentially faster as we go on. So birds are in dire straits. You know, having one quarter of our birds die off in 50 years, that's a pretty staggering statistic. Putting out bird seed does increase the ability for a bird to survive winter. Now, we talked about they have other food sources, but in winter, birds are going to die off. Even if you're feeding them, the weaker birds are not going to survive. There's also something called... Um, don't remember the term migratory I know this term this will come to me migratory culling culling is what hap is what happens in the winter as well you get winter culling the weaker sicker birds are not going to survive a winter the weaker sicker birds are not going to survive a migration so that was one of the big things with the storks that weren't migrating out of Spain that winter cull wasn't happening so you had a, your um, population increase and the health of your population decreases. So if all of your offspring survive, that is not good for your genes because that means the weaker birds are surviving and that means those weaker genes are surviving. Think of, think of an animal as a gene. All they're doing is passing their genes on. You want the strong genes to be passed on and the weaker genes don't survive. That's how animals survive. Um, what happens if you get a weaker gene that survives and it becomes a major part of a population, the majority of the population, when whatever that hardship hits, let's say it's the ability to survive really cold temperatures, you get a really cold snap, you're going to lose a majority of your population and now you've got an instant culling but it's it's more of an instinction uh, extinction uh, event than a culling so you do want to be careful for that so feeding birds you you are going to increase their ability to survive um, but it's not a hundred percent there's still going to be some winter culling you're also going to increase increase uh, reproduction so with a more stable consistent food source which you putting out feed is, um, you are going to give that bird a better chance of having offspring that survive. So with, with massive bird declines, I would say it's a good thing um, that we get less culling because we do need more of that species. What are birds' favorite berry? thinking of spring planting oh that's that's such a good question around here serviceberry and hackberry uh, bushes are very popular with the birds um, blueberry you know later in the season would be blueberry um, and huckleberry and there's another berry in there um, that's like that those are our midsummer ones end of the like winter time winter berry you really want to have some winter berry i have a winter berry planted right in front of the nature center um this is one of my favorite stories so the very first plant sale the friends of ham and acid do a plant sale each spring they didn't do it last spring but we look for the plant sale this spring it's going to be online um the very first plant sale they had a winter berry that nobody wanted it was 
broken and twisted and nobody thought it was even going to survive. So I took it and I planted it right in front of the nature center. Now I have an eight foot winterberry that takes massive winterberry right in front of the nature center. I love that because I can look out if the berries are still on it. I know there's still plenty of food out there when the berries start to disappear. And it's usually I have a mockingbird that that picks that that bush clean. Sometimes a catbird will come along, but it's mainly the mockingbird. Um, then I know that, OK, we're deep into winter. Food's getting scarce. They're starting to eat the winter berry. So winter berries are great ones to have also. Service berry, though, that's the one I just planted one in my yard last year. Um, I plan on planting a whole bunch of them. We're going to have a whole row of them along our stone wall. Um, those are great berries, and you can get them at local uh, greenhouses. So I love the service berry. Cheryl has a winter berry. Didn't get berries this year. Interesting. I don't know if winter berry is one of those that have male and female uh, plants. Some of them, well, if you say this year, that means that they probably had berries in past years. So I don't think winterberry has male and female. But that does happen. It happens with blueberries. It happens with all of the berries. There are years that they don't produce any. And if you've got a blueberry bush and it's just not producing year after year after year, that means you probably need more blueberry bushes around. And that one, that one is not able to pollinate because there's just not enough uh, pollen in the air. But it does happen that the blueberries, you know, great year, better year, the best year, and then nothing. That is a natural cycle for blueberries, for a lot of plants. Even oaks do it. So that's a good one. There are actually uh, some birds that eat oak uh, um, acorns, too. All right. So... I've covered a lot of things. Let me just check. I wrote some notes down, but I think you guys got everything. Um, we talked about predation. We talked about disease. We talked about de uh, dependency. Talked about natural and unnatural food. Increased reproduction. The last thing, my last note. We didn't talk about it at all. Why do you want to have a bird feeder? Bird feeders are an excellent way for you to learn about wildlife. It is one of the few opportunities that you can attract a wild animal to your backyard that is visible and easy to watch. Watching birds, you're going to learn not only the way they eat and the way they behave with each other, but if you are able to see them sing, the fastest way to learn bird calls is to watch a bird sing. Also, if a predator comes in, you're going to quickly recognize the, your bird's behavior changes when there's a predator in the area. Your bird's behavior is going to change when the weather changes. You watch your birds and watch the weather forecast. And before the weather forecast even says, oh, we're going to have snow, the birds are increasing their feeding. They don't want to be out feeding in the winter. I mean, in the snowstorm. They can be, but they don't want to be. They want to find a nice place to hunker down and wait for the storm to pass. So they need to eat a lot. So all of these things, that's a great way for you to learn about wildlife is to watch it on a bird feeder. So that would be my number one why you should have, why everybody should feed birds because they're just a lot of fun to watch. Uh, it's kind of like watching, uh, sitting by a campfire and watching it or watching a waterfall, something just mesmerizing about the movement, watching the waves here at the beach. Um, but it's even better because you will learn things. You may not think you're learning anything about birds. You'll start to notice behavioral changes with weather, with temperature, with other animals. So watch out for it. It's really fun to do and interesting. All right. I hope that everybody enjoyed this program. This was really different, being much more interactive. And I like it. I will do another one like this. Please, if anyone has a question that can start one of these conversations, send it in. I would love to hear it. Because this question just was, should you feed birds on a feeder or not? It turned into a full program. So um, please continue to send in your questions and comments. 
please continue to follow us and like us on Facebook and visit our website, visit YouTube. Um, it's always great. Don't forget our program this Saturday at 10 o'clock. It's going to be a good one. More wild animals. We're going to have uh, coyotes are coming up, eagles. Actually, I don't even remember whether it's eagles or coyotes this weekend, but I'll let you know next uh, tomorrow. And until then, this is Ranger Russ signing off from the Meg's Point Nature Center.